So, now Greg mentioned actually that, and, and you, many of you would know that Oxford and Cumberland County in general have played very important roles in the Nova Scotia forestry sector over the years. J.D. Irving has been a major player throughout and continues today. We're thankful to have Steve McClellan with us. Steve is the fourth generation in his family to work in forestry in Cumberland County. Growing up, he went to school here in Oxford and then continued on to Thunder Bay, Ontario, where he graduated from the Forest Technology Program at Lakehead University in 1984. Steve worked for the family forest business for nine years before joining J.D. Irving Limited. Over the past 30 years, Steve has worked all phases of operations and civil culture at J.D. Irving. His main focus there now is purchased wood and stumpage. And the title of Steve's presentation today is Today's Civil Culture is Tomorrow's Forest. Welcome, Steve. But as a landowner, you can only work with what you've got. 
Determining the best treatment or treatments should be done with the help or advice from a forestry professional. There are lots of professionals out there that can offer you advice. advice. My favorite is a professional from a local sawmill, perhaps J.D. Irving. Uh, there's also lots of forestry consultants out there, there's forestry co-ops, there's the uh, uh, DNR staff are there, they're professionals, they'll help, and there's all kinds of others. There's many people out there that can give you advice on how to clear cut your woodlot, but may not be as qualified to help with the follow-up treatments after the cut. How to do a successful select cut to improve long-term value of your woodlot requires knowledge and expertise in the field. Let's talk about some options that may pertain to your woodlot and how you could manage it. The first and most important question that comes to my mind that a landowner has to understand is what's the vision of their woodlot? They know what they have today. What do they want it to look like in five years? What do they want it to look like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and so on? A clear vision of your woodlot, what you want for your woodlot, will help you make the right decisions. Today, the province of Nova Scotia is following the Leahy management approach on Crown land. And it was mentioned earlier, there's a three-pronged strategy to this. Conservation, which allows, which uh, is more a do-nothing and let it grow naturally. There's the light touch, which allows for some select cuts on forest stands. And there's the high productivity. Clear cut, site prep, plant, grow as fast as you can to cut it again. Uh, as a landowner, you can follow one, two, or all three of these approaches in your woodlot. Today, I've got a small woodlot just outside of Oxford Junction, and I'm following two of these. I've got a high production section, and I've got a conservation section. I've got parts through my woodlot that are all interconnected with walking and snowshoe trails that, I, that have tolerant hardwoods and hemlocks that I hope to never have cut. And I'm just in there, you know, working away to make sure I've got nice trails to, to go forever for my children and my grandchildren. I have a clear vision for my woodlot. Uh, my daughters coming on, I hope they follow my vision, but they can change that vision. That's the one thing about a forest, it doesn't have to stay the same. You can change things. I would hope they stay the same, but I try to educate them the best I can so they make the right decisions when they do, do take it over. This long-winded preamble brings us to the main point of my talk today is what silviculture you could do on your woodlot. Clearly knowing your vision will guide you and the forestry, forestry professional to make your woodlot better. Maybe the other possibilities is you, other possibility is you don't know anything about your forest. You don't know anything about the woods or woodlot. That's where the professional comes in. There's lots of people and you can get more than one opinion and there's lots of them out there. We all know about opinions. Uh, but it's very important to help with a long-term vision to have a professional there to help you. We'll look at some options and where they can take us. One option I've seen quite often uh, with landowners, they need money. They're doing something major in life, and they've picked a section of their woodlot, they want to clear cut it. They want to maximize the dollars, every cent they can get. So, for whatever reason, build a house, child's education, whatever the reason is, it doesn't matter. Some people need the money, so you go ahead, you clear cut it, and that's the best option. But, after that, is where the silviculture comes in. What's your best option after that? Or what options do you have after a clear cut? Well, it depends on your vision, of course. Uh, one of the options is uh, to have the area site prepped and planted. Have nice young spruce come back in, uh, perhaps a year and a half after, maybe you apply a herbicide. If you're not a herbicide person, then maybe you do an early vegetation control with a spacing saw. They were showing a picture of a spacing saw earlier, 
probably one of the best tools in the forest right now. It'll do so much for so many different buried stands. So the advantage of uh, the early intervention, whether it be spray or uh, spacing saw, is you get rid of the young uh, competing hardwood, the raspberries, this sort of thing, because in those first few years, it is so vital for these young planted trees to have wood clear, uh, no competition for sunlight, as little competition for water as you can get, and all the nutrients in the soil. So you've done that. You, you've done your early intervention along about probably eight years, nine years, ten years. Your trees should be up around that eight, nine, ten years, or eight, nine, ten feet tall. So then you have to go back with your spacing saw again and do another cleaning. And there again, you're taking out competing hardwood because it's hard to beat them. When those hardwood get started, it's hard to slow them down. So you take another poke at them, and this time you're looking at stocking. You want to get the right stocking in your plantation. So maybe you take out a few balsam fir because balsam fir tend to be a shorter lived species and susceptible to rot a little quicker. So you take out a few of them, reducing the competition and then it should be good to grow from there. So from there you would go to perhaps the commercial thinning stage where you win with a machine, maybe that's age 20, 25, 30, depending on how intense and how good your forest management was. But now that's one option from a clear cut. The other option from a clear cut is you do nothing. You work with what's there. And there's many, many areas throughout Nova Scotia that the regen will come back great and you'll get great spruce and fir coming back uh, that you don't need to do any spray, you don't need to plant and that's great. If you're lucky enough to have that uh, right here in this area in Cumberland County a lot of times you get overrun by hardwood and if your vision is to have a softwood forest then you have to do something. So if you leave it and let it come back on its own What's the tool you use again? Same thing. You come back and you grab that spacing saw and you open it up. You reduce the competition. You take out the non-desired species. Pick your target species. Give them lots of sunlight, lots of nutrients, lots of water. Another option with your woodlot, it's not all clear cut. That's that other way. No, that's not that bad word. I'm going to say it's bad uh, It's a select cut. Now, with a select cut, with your wood lot, there's, there's many different ways to do it, depending on your vision. Do you have a vision of a softwood forest? Do you have a vision of a hardwood forest? Do you have a vision of a, of a mixed wood forest? Well, with a select cut, you can do all three. If you have a, a mixed forest, and you say, well, I want to take it to softwood and just leave the hardwood. I've seen it lots of times. People feel that there's high value in the uh, in the softwood, so they target that. They leave good regen underneath of the softwood, but target most of the softwood leaves you a nice pure hardwood stand. A lot of people are real happy with that. They don't see their ground as clear cut. The other option is you can win and you can go the other way. Maybe you've got some bigger hardwood and smaller softwood. Well, you go in and you target your hardwood. Pick up the hardwood you want to take, leave some softwood. Your hardwood's going to come back regardless. You can, it's, it's a weed. It's coming back when you want it or not. So you can, you can go that way. The other option, if you've got a mixed stand and you want to have a mixed stand, well, go through, take a little bit of both. You go through your stand, maybe you take out your balsam fir because that's the one that's going to rot and fall down the quickest. And if you, if you have a market, maybe you take out your popple or some of your other low grade hardwoods, maybe your intolerance, maybe you try and leave yellow birch and, and sugar maple or red maple. So that's always an option. Uh, the other one is maybe you've got a wood lot that was uh, 25, 30, 35 years ago, maybe it was planted. So you've got a nice young plantation there. So what you do then is you come in with specialized equipment after talking to a professional because 
It's the commercial thinning on a plantation. There's certain parameters or criteria that should be met, and it's very important to meet them. And one of the key ones is live crown. And for those that don't understand 100% live crown, you take the whole height of the tree and you figure out what percentage of it visually has live growing branches. So if you've got something, a plantation, and I've seen it, a uh, younger plantation end up with maybe 30% live crown, and only 30% of the whole height is live branches, the rest of it's all self pruned itself. Unfortunately, even though that is a nice young plantation, it's not a good candidate because those live branches are what make that tree grow. Those live branches are the, are the manufacturing of the photosynthesis and everything in the tree that make it grow. And there's so little left that you're not going to get much response from doing your thing. You can do your thing, but it won't grow as quickly. If you've got 50% uh, live crown, then that tree's just going to smoke. When you open it up, take out uh, 30, 40% of the other trees, and you leave that, that tree's really going to grow. The other thing you have to really consider, you can plant trees most anywhere. You can plant trees on a very rocky soil and they'll grow. But if you plant those trees on a very rocky soil and let them grow for 35 years and you want to do a commercial thinning, they can be very susceptible to blow down. Uh, because those roots just aren't deep enough in the ground. If you've got shale or a lot of rock there, the roots just can't get down to hold themselves to the wind. The other thing is water table. Where's the water table on your property? If it's wet, if you've got uh, wet and clay soil, and open them up, they tend to blow down. Uh, well, I know this because I've seen it. I've seen it on different ones that, you know, the odd one that we've done, that uh, maybe we missed one of these criteria, but uh, it's, gonna be, that's, it's so important before you go to the work to do all this, to do a, a commercial thinning or any kind of thinning. You want to make sure you have a professional there help you, help you understand what you've got because nobody wants to do a thinning just to come back in two years and see three quarters of what you had left blown down. Uh, the other one I haven't talked about uh, for thinning is a tolerant hardwood stand. And a tolerant hardwood stand can be a great one for a, a select cut. And we've done a lot of them and Surprisingly, you can go in mechanically with big equipment, do a hardwood select cut, and be very successful. Uh, the bigger the equipment, the more control they have. So when you're cutting these bigger trees, which is one of your targets, with a, a tolerant hardwood stand, if you're doing a select cut in it, you want to target your bigger trees that are going to make hardwood saw logs, and you want to target your poor quality and crooked trees <coughs> that are in the future. So you're taking down bigger trees, you're bringing out some nice hardwood saw logs and stuff, but the same thing, you have to understand soil, you have to understand rockiness, but it can be done and it, it leaves a really nice job. And what you're leaving is the nice young sugar maple, uh, yellow birch, nice pole trees that you can see and look at and say, that's going to grow into a nice saw log. But with a hardwood, uh, tolerant hardwood select cut, uh, the intervention time is uh, a lot longer. Like you're looking, like with a softwood uh, treatment, you could be in maybe every 15 years and do an intervention. An intervention with your tolerant hardwood stand, you're looking more like 35 years between entrances. So, you know, you look and you say, all right, well, is that going to be in 35 years, is that tree still going to be standing or should I take it out for a saw log right now? Or in 35 years, is that tree right there, does it look like it could grow into a nice high grade piece of wood? So these are the things you have to look at. These are the things when you're walking through your wood lot, you've got a picture. These are the things that your forestry professional is going to help advise you on. Uh, I might have got ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, 
And like I said, forestry for professional is key because some of these things, like I talk about going in and you look at your live crown. Well, you can lose that live crown, that perfect window of when you do a commercial fitting or anything. You can lose that in five to 10 years. And that doesn't sound like very long. Say, oh, five years, I can do lots in five to 10 years, but it happens fast. It happens fast, and once you've missed that window, then you've missed it. You've, you're, if you're looking for optimum growth, you've missed it. If you're looking at a young stand, and you're talking about going in with a spacing saw or a clearing saw, it's important to hit it at the right time so you keep that tree chugging. You keep that tree growing as fast as it can because there's optimum times to open stuff up and work to get it to grow with its best capability. Uh, like I say, uh, good decisions, good management. We've got the same forest here. We can do the same thing. You go in, if, if that's what your uh, goal is, to be an active landowner looking to take some revenue off the land, it can be done. Spread it out. You can have a nice red spruce and yellow uh, birch forest, uh, Acadian forest. You can have that and still take trees out and grow more underneath. Anyway, that's, I'm short and sweet maybe, but uh, I just thought that I'd share some of my thoughts on, uh, on some of the options that are out there for private landowners. Uh, like I say, there's all kinds of people here that'll help you make your decisions. Whether you're a landowner that's been, been around for a long time and pretty well know your stuff, or if you've just inherited a wood lot. I'm dealing with a gentleman, I've been dealing with him for 20 years. He said, the next time we get together, he said, I'm bringing my daughter with me. He said, I want you to be her eyes on the woods. She, he's, he's been there, he's walked all through the woods, he's fell all through the woods with me. He walks about 10 feet and down he goes. So <laughs> it takes time, but he loves it. He took a passion in his wood lot and drove me just about crazy a lot of times, calling and questions. But that's all part of understanding. He, he had a real passion. He wanted to grow a good wood lot. He's got a great wood lot, and he's passing it on to his daughter. And that's what we need to think about. Your children, your grandchildren, make sure they're t you're talking to them about what your vision is, what their vision, and ask them what their vision is. Maybe they don't want to cut any wood. Maybe they want to go all into that conservation part. The very best. You still need to understand your wood lot, its capabilities, and everything else. And with the extreme weather we've been having lately, things change. You know, I, I said clear cut. Well, Fiona did a major clear cut in Cumberland, Colchester, Vecto County. And Mother Nature's awful slow doing the silver culture. So maybe we have to help. Anyway, thank you. Welcome any questions. Questions.